We want our data to be available on all those regions for two reasons. One is high availability of the service, and the second is the data durability in case of a disaster. We want our data to be located in a different geo region. So we want a multi master database, but why? So, first of all, operational locality, something that Gwen said. We want to write our data locally within our data center, and we want to read it locally. If we can negligence the network latency, we can actually benefit and speed up our application. Data durability, so we want our data to be available on other data centers if we're going to fail over to them. And last thing is we want an active, active service, and we want it for two reasons. One, we bought infrastructure, we paid for it, whether it's in the cloud or on-premise, we want to use it. We want to actually make use of all of our infrastructure. If you're using like a primary standby service, we will not use the standby, or only for reading. Uh, second thing is we want to keep our hand on the pulse of our infrastructure. Sometimes we don't know if the servers of the standby can actually compete and actually keep up with the load on our system. So if we can write to all of our data centers, we know that the infrastructure is full. Cool, so who wants multi-master databases? So a lot of uh, global distributed apps. So let's say CDN, which is Content Delivery Networks. We want our users to stream their data closer to them so they won't go across DC to get a movie or to reach for their device data or anything like that. Uh, retail and e-commerce, so we want our shipping uh, data and our orders data to be located closer to the user. Usually users will get something from the warehouses in Europe will need their data to sit in Europe. Okay, social networks. So social networks usually People that we know, usually most of the time, are people that are close to us geographically. So we want our data to sit closer to us. And I have the global platforms, so any devices that actually transmits data, we don't want it to go overseas to uh, insert this data and persist. So we need a multi-master MongoDB deployment. And we want a single database to be, spent, to be spread across all those regions. So why MongoDB, you're asking me? So this is the benefits that MongoDB provides. Flexible schema. It has a rich language. It has a scale-out and application concepts and capabilities. So if we want to grow with the data centers as we go, we can do it easily with MongoDB. So how would we do that? So we're going to use three MongoDB features. First is zone charting, and I'm going to tell in one minute what is zone charting. Uh, replica sets, which is basically a group of MongoDBs that are repli replicating one primary to several secondaries. And we're going to use Cloud Manager Automation for the ease of deployment and for the sharding management capabilities which makes our life very easy. Okay, so what is zone sharding? So, if you're familiar with, with sharded clusters, basically it's an ability to have several primaries within your MongoDB deployment. So a single database can sit on several, on several primaries. If we're gonna use zone sharding, which was introduced in MongoDB 3.4 and has it's old version that's called Tagware sharding. We can basically say that shard A is responsible for US East, shard B is responsible for US West, and shard C is responsible for Asia Pacific. This means that we will place a primary on each one of these data centers. With this capability, we can read and write data from this primary simultaneously from single Mongo S to all of these shards. So one MongoS can feed all of these primaries at the same time. <laughs> Replica sets. 
Okay, so as we said, replica set is an ability to take a primary and replicate it to another secondary. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this primary and have a replica on US West. We're going to take the US West primary and replicate it to both regions. The same we're going to do to Asia Pacific. So if you look at this picture, we basically have all the set of colors in each data center, which means that we have all the data locally in US East, US West, and Asia Pacific. Since we can read from secondaries and or read from nearest nodes, the data can be accessed locally on each data center. Can you add secondaries? You cannot. You so it's not active active. So it's not an active active. Well, you're writing to the primary, but you're reading from a secondary. You can, you can read from a primary. Okay, so let's look. Let's say we have this, this toolbox, this imaginary uh, Photoshop board. And we want to drive and uh, want to draw our department. So we have a set of tools, as I said, we have a primary shard, secondary shard. We have hidden member that we can add, MongoS, the config service, which holds the metadata of the cluster. And we can have priority to our reference. So as I said, we're gonna place a primary on each one of the data centers. So we have US East, US West, and Asia Pacific. Then we're gonna build our shard. So our shard is gonna be spanned across the DCs. So we have a secondary, we have two members in each data center. It's an, it's an important point. And basically, we want to have two members inside a single DC, so if a member is failing from time to time, we won't fail over to another DC. So if this primary fails, we're going to fail over to this secondary. And we can do it with priorities. So we can say that the priority of this member is three. Those two members have the second priority in line, which makes US West the second option to fail over. And the last two members have a priority of one. And I added a hidden secondary because I cannot have an even number of members inside a replica set. So I won't have a tie in my elections. So I had it, so I add a hidden member. This member has zero votes. Okay. Doesn't have to be hidden. But I just use use a hidden member just to make it clear what kind of member is it. And if we are left with only one data center, we can easily spin an arbiter here and have this replica set continue working. So an arbiter is just a process that gives votes to a replica set. So we can revive this replica set fast, have this secondary turn into a regular secondary, and we're good to go only with one data center. So we're going to do the same to the second uh, chart, but we're going to say that Asia Pacific is, because it's closer, we're going to make it as the second uh, operational failover. And we're going to do the same for the Asia Pacific. We're going to de deploy our config servers. So the config servers also follow, since they are also a replica set in this picture, they are also following the rule of having at least two members inside the data center for where or when one member is failing, we can actually spin up. And we can actually fail over within this. We're going to place a, a local Mongo S on each data center. This way we can access locally to our data. Okay, so this is the shards from the picture before. This is the green shard. This is the red shard. This is the blue shard, and this is the replica set of the config servers. Cloud Manager. So we're going to use Cloud Manager uh, for automation, and automation was uh, introduced to Cloud Manager in 2015. Uh, does anyone use Cloud Manager here? Are you familiar with this product? I know you do. <laughs> uh, so this, this product is basically 
have three main capabilities. One is automation. It lets you have an agent on each one of your boxes, reports to a central MongoDB management system, and it can be in cloud uh, server, it can be an on-premise service, it can be in your laptop. And the automation agent basically lets you deploy things on your machines, lets you uh, upgrade them, maintain them, scale them out uh, via the web GUI. Also, it has monitoring capabilities and it has backup capabilities to backup things to our cloud and you pay by the amount of data that you consume. So why are we going to use uh, Cloud Manager? So ease of a complex deployment. Uh, it also gives visibility into our deployment. Uh, it has a sharding management capability. So all these configurations of the zones and the ranges to our collections can be done via this GUI. And also if we need to perform a scale up, we can do it easily as well already using Cloud Manager. Okay, so I'm going to quickly go over the considerations. So as I said, we're going to place each shard primary inside a specific DC. Uh, we're going to make it a primary that... <laughs> How convenient. <laughs> And we're gonna we're gonna make it uh, the zone uh, the primary for this zone. Uh, the database must be sharding enabled. So we're gonna use shard sharding. Sorry, the collections are gonna use like a, a DC field, which is gonna be part of the sharding key, and this will actually let the primaries know the MongoS know where to route those uh, calls, uh, only for writes, not for reads. Uh, the config server replica set, since it needs to be spread across those three DCs, we're going to use five members. And if we have uncharted collections, but we still want them to sit locally, we need to place a dedicated database uh, and have a primary shard configuration for this database to be configured to the local DC. So if we, want, we have uncharted collections that we want to keep in US East, we're going to create a US East database and going to place the primary shard of this database as US East, same for the other regions. Okay, I've talked about the replica set considerations, mainly why we are why we need an odd number of voting members, and we need at least two members inside each inside each DC. Uh, and we have this hidden member to retain the symmetry across all DCs. Okay, so sharding configurations. So let's say we have a user's collection. So we're going to have a, a sharding key named DC and user ID. Uh, we're going to tag the shards. We're going to say shard A is US East, shard B is US West, shard C belongs to Asia Pacific. We're going to add a tag range to this user's collection and we're going to say, okay, data center that is named US East 0 until US East 9, just a placeholder for the uh, for data centers to come in US East uh, is going to reside in the US East uh, primary it's going to be written to the US East primary and the same for the US West uh, for space reasons I didn't put Asia Pacific but it has the same configuration for Asia Pacific so let's see how it works under the hood okay so let's say I I have my two data centers in this case just for this picture I have the US East Data Center and the US West have the application running in US East. So I'm writing it with a right concern of one, that means that I only want the first primary to react to my write. And I'm reading with read preference nearest, that means that I want to nearest know with uh, the smallest latency to respond and retrieve my data. I can use some capabilities like read concern and max stainless parameter in 3.4 to ensure that my data is consistent, that I'm not reading stale data. Uh, if you want, I can elaborate about this later. Okay, so I'm going to write a record. I'm going to write a user ID, which is me at mongodb.com, to DC US East 0. So, of course, this can be configurable on the app server somewhere, like a 
metadata at the app server stores that is sitting in USCs. And now the data is being written, is being written to the MongoS. The MongoS goes to the config server, asks for the data, the metadata, where should I place this document, and writes it to shard A here. We're going to write a record that is that belongs to US West. The same operation is going to write the record to US West. So it's you at MongoDB.com. When we're going to read a record, we're going to go to the Mongo S, go to the config server, retrieve the data, but since we're using the nearest read preference, we're going to read it from this member here, which is the replica of US West. We're going to retrieve the data locally and return it to the user. Okay, so I want to show a quick demo of Cloud Manager and, and how I'm going to spin this in 10 minutes. So, the working like that. The working like that. The working like that, yeah. Okay, uh, so I hope you can, you can see it from this resolution. Maybe I need to fix this uh, stuff. So, um, I placed the slide from uh, before just that we will see the exact uh, plan that we want to deploy. And this is actually my canvas, this is actually Cloud Manager. And I'm going to show that I have all of my servers. So the first line is basically created in US East. The second line of servers is US West. And this line record of servers is located in Asia Pacific. So US West is here. And those servers are in Asia Pacific. So it's hard to see here. But it actually says a prefix of DC0 in machines. This is DC1, this is DC2. I don't know why the resolution got so. So anyway, I'm, going, I'm showing you that it's hard to see here. <laughs> but they are actually deployed into Amazon regions that reside in different geolocations. They each have an automation agent running on them. So now we can go here and spin up a cluster. So it's as easy as saying new, filling in the cluster name, choosing the version. Um, I'm going to start with deploying it only to machines on DC0. So I'm going to say uh, everything that I deploy now should be deployed to DC0. Uh, I'm just going to deploy three Mongo S's, as I said. I'm going to deploy uh, five config servers. Yeah, and I'm going to give them eligible ports to have on those machines. And I'm going to I'm going to have a config server, as I said. I can raise the number of shards here, but I won't do that because I want to deploy each one at a time just so it can be easier. So I'm going to have a six, a six member replica set, and I'm going to place the priorities the same way that I've written over here. So this two will be three, this one will be two, this one will be one, and the last one will be a needed member So since the resolution is not so great, I'm going to move forward a bit. And I want to show you that I can actually hover over these processes and drag and drop them to my servers. So this way I can build this deployment really easily. I'm placing, the, I'm placing the servers according to my replica sets here. Okay. And eventually, I will have my data centers span across all three DCs. I have two machines in each data center. So, I'm going to show you a group that this, uh, this deployment is already deployed in. 
and it's going to take about five minutes to deploy it. So I can see that all my machines, I can see that I have a primary in each data center. So I'm also getting metrics coming into this cluster. I have six MongoDBs, and I have labels here, which, is, which says US East, US West, and Asia Pacific. So it's easy to understand which, they, which shard belongs to which data center. I have the sharding capabilities, which gave the, the labels. And in here, I have the ranges. So I associate Asia Pacific to DC2, DC0 shard to, uh, to US East. And I have my sharding key here that I've placed here. You can place the name of the collection, the shard key fields. And I have my ranges. So I have the US East, the Asia Pacific from 0 to 9, US East from 0 to 9, and my user ID from min to max. So every user that is written to you to US East will be stored in US East. Um, here you can see the metrics that are coming in. I can see metrics on MongoS, on config servers, um, queries. I can use a data explorer that exists in Cloud Manager, which is a web UI to access my data. Um, and I wanted to show here that I actually have data that is spread across both three data centers. Uh, but since the resolution is not that great, I'm going to continue. So, to summarize. Can I ask questions about like, this demo? Like about the cloud manager? Or yeah. The, the uh, just the last slide. Okay. So, um, so, we talked about MongoDB multi master architecture or how we are simulating a multi master workload. Uh, so we have the operation locality, which will improve our performance. We have our data redundancy to have our durability of the data. Uh, and we have a cross DC access, which gives us a high availability of this service. We use those MongoDB features. We use zone charting to define our primaries in each zone or in each data center. We use replica sets to replicate the data between the zones. And we use Cloud Manager Automation to basically do a UI configuration of dragging and dropping services and processes and monitoring them using sharding capabilities to make it happen. Things that we can define on the process level, we are doing it with the service of the agent. Mm -hmm. In 
limits, view limits, and stuff like that. Yeah, but things that are storage or the way you you configure your kernel and no, no kernel no, but again storage and attach the disk. <coughs> no, it's, it doesn't attach the disk, so it just receives the mount point that you want to read the MongoDB data to, mm -hmm. and it will it will create the DB path to this mount point. Okay, and the question about the deployment of the architecture. What's the tipping point of actually stop using uh, single node replicas uh, like in comparison to start sharding things in, in the capacity of data maybe or I don't know. Because I, so, I've, heard, I've heard that uh, you should scale up Mongo as much as possible before you start sharding it. So sharding requires you to use shard key. If you don't use the right shard key, you can end up, you know, first skewing your data. Mm -hmm. So you will have a high shard, which will do all the work. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is you can run like scatter gather queries, which are not shard targeted. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to, if you want to scale out data, so you want to take your data that is that you want to share, so. Yeah, so sharding will probably be your solution. But if your data not, does not need to be shared, so you can work with two, three, four replica sets. Uh, like, do you have a, a certain capacity of data that you shouldn't hold more in the single node? Yeah, like we, we have, I have a, yeah, replica set, sorry. I had a customer who was working with me who did an interesting thing. <coughs> Actually, he had a write cache with really, really small data size, but he wanted to have the access locally on the same server. So he wants, he wants every application now to have its own, let's say, run, rep, not replica, but its own primary and the other secondary, so we can read the data not going out, outside, outside of the there. server. Uh, so, so, uh, the, uh, the access to going to, to primary and they can be they can be on two machines. They can be on the same machine. Because uh, uh, yeah. okay. can you repeat the question? Like, like uh, the writing option that is not derived to be local, but in terms of that, you are using this kind of right? So it can be it, it will be local one of the shots point to one of the answers. Maybe you want to, maybe you want to ask in Hebrew just so it be clear for me. Or you see the question was if you have a shard key that is DC, means when you hit the Mongo S with the sharding and it, it's writing to the to the other DC. With primary of US West in US West. Yeah. If you're writing from application in US East, it will it will write to US West. If you're writing if you're placing the DC value of West. Of US West, yeah, it will, it, will, it will understand that it needs to write it to US West. Yeah, and you will see it in replica there. Yeah, and you can read it from a local sure. local secondary. So there is no best practice like like Cassandra had somewhere in, in the past that you should have 200 gigabytes of data on a node and not more. Right? Yeah. Like Monga um, doesn't. No, uh, in Cassandra you have many things like the. The shard, like the, the row size shouldn't be yeah, larger, yeah, yeah, larger than. Yeah, yeah, maybe. yeah. So basically, I saw replica sets like that holds terabytes of data. Yeah. So, so it's something that replica set can't handle. But again, if you want to grow dramatically, let's say I'm adding 50% of my users at a single time, it would be hard for replica set to. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you're gradually going up, you can understand when is your breaking point when you cannot handle it on a single machine. Because in this case, we want to scale rights, right? Because we want to have multiple front, multiple pieces doing the right work, and not have one replica set. Well, we can we can basically have like a primary here and two secondaries here, but then this data center will need to write here always. Yeah. So with combining sharding and replica sets, we can achieve that the data will be signed locally and it can be writing it locally. Mm -hmm. awesome. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, just slightly off topic, but regarding sharding keys, so what do you, like you, you said you had to choose the right sharding key, right? So it would be distributed and equal. So in general, like sharding keys, what, are, what is the best? So, uh, no, it's not a specific question. So what do you do if you, choose, you think you chose the right sharding key, but then you discover that like your data is not distributed uh, evenly? So one of your clusters is much bigger than the other? Uh, well, then the best solution is to reshard. Uh, resharding can be painful sometimes, depending on your amount of data. You can always, you know, dump and restore it uh, to a new definition. Um, yes, this, this will be the best uh, solution, or to migrate data to a new collection gradually, you know, every time I'm reading an old version collection, an old version document, I'm going to convert it to a new version document, and so on, you're going to slowly change the, your data model. Because that's why data modeling design is very important. So first of all, we have an office here in, in Tel Aviv, and if anyone is interested in our services or understand how can they engage MongoDB or they want to try out our products, we just say hi. <laughs> more, more than just say hi, it works. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much.